Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my comics. Uh, I'll give you a very brief history. Uh, 1970 I was collecting, I was about 12 years old, and a friend of my father's came over our house and noticed that I was reading comic books and said that he had a bunch of those in his attic that he used to uh, get for his nieces and nephews when they came in from out of town. <clears throat> said I could have them. And of course he forgot about it, my dad forgot about it, and I never forgot about it. I kept bugging my dad to go over to his house, so finally one day we did go over and he gave me a bunch of comic books. A couple of boxes full. Uh, a lot of them good, a lot of them not good. Wide variety, mainly from uh, 1960 to 63. That's when his uh, nieces and nephews used to come and visit. Um, he gave me a shoebox full of them and uh, had a lot of good ones in it. And then when he found out there was a lot of good ones, he got a, another box, <clears throat> brought that over and it had absolutely nothing in it. Well, these are the ones that I kept. Uh, a bunch of the DCs and Dells and stuff like that I sold off last year on eBay. So let's get right to it. First one, Tales to Astonish. Number 25. It's got some issues with it. A little chipping along the top. Decent copy, probably about a good. So that's Tales to Astonish 25. There's Tales to Astonish 29. A little bit less shape. More creasing. Some pieces missing. Down along the bottom. A lot of folding and creasing and stuff. They like that one. They gave that one a good reading. Tales to Astonish 40. A lot of water damage along the edge. complete. Staples are attached. There's a pesky little 15 cent sticker up there. A lot of his books came with. Must have been one certain store that he went to that used to try to get a couple extra pennies for their comic books. Next one, Tales to Astonish. 44. First Wasp. This one's in nice shape. Probably about a 6 -0. No real major problems with it. No major folds or creases. Has some spine wear to it. You can see that pretty good in the shot. Solid book. Next one, Journey into Mystery, number 81. <clears throat> it's a little smudge there up in the top corner. It's got some pretty heavy uh, creasing down the center of the book. These stories are real cool if you ever get a chance to read them or get the reprints on them. I got that as a little grade one too, probably about a between a one and a two. Journey into Mystery 82. This one's in really nice shape. I wish it was an 83. Well, only one or two little creases down in the bottom corner. Real nice book. But one month too early. Another journey in a mystery. 88. Yeah, we skipped over the 83, unfortunately. Pretty good issue. No major problems with it. Just some regular reading wear. I guess it's about a 5 all maybe. Another journey into mystery, 89, classic Kirby cover. Doesn't get any better than that. And some creasing along the spine. Normal wear. When you consider these kids were reading them and coloring them and everything else they did to a bunch of them. It's amazing some of these survived the way they did. I've owned them since 1970, so I've taken pretty good care of them. Put them all in plastic in the early 70s. When I quit collecting in 75, I let them sit for about 20 years, came back and they were still all in great shape. The plastic had degraded a little bit, but didn't hurt the pages at all. 
rebagged them, and at that point I found out there was boards, so I boarded everything. My whole collection, actually. Did that in around 2000. Journey of Mystery 103. Really hard to get in high grade. This one has, unfortunately, the 15 cent price sticker was ripped off it. Don't know if that was me or somebody else. That kind of screws the book up though, as far as I'm concerned. Still, nice issue, good story. Love Jack Kirby. Alrighty, the only Avengers in the whole stack. Number four, Return of Captain America. There's that pesky 15 cent sticker. Nice issue, some creasing along the spine. A little damage down in the bottom corner there. Nothing major though. Very solid copy, no rips, no tears. Nice issue. Okay, Fantastic Four, my favorite. Number 16. Is in very nice shape. Some spine creases, a little bit of wear. Nothing major. Great colors on this comic. Unfortunately, here's a fine example of Marvel chipping. All the way down the right side. But hey, for free, you can't complain. Fantastic Four number seven. It's about a 2.0 mainly because it has a bunch of scribbling on the cover. Young aspiring artist, I guess. Took looks, what looks like a felt pen or something to it. And marked it up pretty good. Bunch of creasing down in the corner. Some more of that pen marks. That one right there. Got a few eyeballs covered in it and stuff. Some of the lettering. Very cool. I love the Fantastic Four. And the last one in there is, look at that, number one. This is a low grade copy. Uh, it has a bunch of issues with it, a bunch of creasing along the side. The main issue is right there. Hole in the cover, and between the man and the woman there, you can see there's a hole that goes through about four or five pages. And a bunch of creasing down along the bottom, a bunch of wear. Still, it's pretty solid. Staples are attached. Top of the book's actually in pretty good shape. Alrighty. <clears throat> Tales of Suspense 42. Gotta love the early Iron Mans, those are really cool. Took a little while for him to hit his stride, but once they did, it got really neat. Bunch of wear on this one. A lot of creasing. Looks like some water damage. A lot of creases down there. So that's a low-grade copy. And the other tales of suspense that he had was darn it all number 39. This one had a sticker on it up in the corner and it was removed. You can kind of see the outline of it there. It took a little bit of the paper off. Staples are attached real good. Real solid book. Some minor, minor tears along the right side. Overall, very sharp book, at least a 4.0. So, speaking of a 4.0, it's Incredible Hulk number 5. That's a date stamp up there. A little smudgy. Staples are attached real good. Pretty nice spine. Uh, a couple little issues down here in the corner, some creases. A little chunk of paper missing between the two people there. I think that's uh, Betty and Rick, probably. 
for all you guys are going to write in and go, hey, I'll jump over there. A little bit of coloring on the cover tool, unfortunately. Somebody took a pen there and tried to improve his teeth a little bit. A little bit of mark there, pen mark there. Next one, probably the nicest one of the bunch, condition-wise. Incredible Hulk 2. This book's real nice, at least a 6 so probably better. Nothing at all major wrong with this problem. A real nice spine. Some minor creases along the spine, but nothing much to speak of. A little bit of wear down there at the bottom. A little bit along the open edge. Real nice copy, though. Nice book. And number one. This book was on top of the pile, the first pile that he gave me. After I gathered myself, I told my dad, hey, this book's worth quite a bit of money, which then 20 or 30 bucks was quite a bit of money. <laughs> so we went back in and told him, and he said, eh, if you ever sell them, we'll split the money. Well, he's still alive, and I did split some of the money with him last year when I sold a bunch of DCs and Dells and stuff. This one has a bunch of issues. Bottom staples just about popped. The white you see behind there is just a microfiber uh, paper I have in there. Bunch of creasing. This one's got quite a bit of wear on it. Along the side there's a bunch. But again, it's complete. Attached at the staples, center fold, everything. So that's a real nice copy of Hulk 1. And yeah, there had to be some Spider-Man in there, right? There's number 10. It's about a 5.0. Again, I don't know what the sticker does to it. It's probably better with the sticker on and off. The spine's in pretty nice shape. A few issues down there. The bottom staple looks a little funky, but it is attached. A little bit of wear in the corner there. Solid copy. Got some issues there in his armpit and a little bit higher than that. There's a little bit of crease. Other than that's a real solid copy. Real nice. Amazing Spider-Man number three. <clears throat> this was also one of the best condition comics in the whole group. As far as the ones that I wanted to keep. Real nice shape. A few issues along the bottom. Nice little crease there. Yeah, a little bit of Marvel chipping. But this bad boy's missing about five or six pages that were ripped completely out of it. The first two and the last two, and I think there's another one somewhere that got ripped off. So <clears throat> unfortunately, that one's incomplete. But every time I complain about that one being incomplete, I'm glad that that one is complete. It's the big boy. Amazing Spider-Man number one. It's got some issues to it. The main one being right there is a rip from next to the S through the P, I, D, and up to the Z. I don't know if you can see it or not, but okay, I was 12 years old. you got to give me a break. I put a little tape on the inside of the book to tape it. The tape has since fallen off, but there is a little bit of residue on there. Uh, firmly attached at the staples. You can see them there. There's some creasing along the bottom. Decent amount, actually. There's a water stain that runs from the bottom, about an inch from the edge all the way up. But it doesn't really affect the pages at all, it's just on the cover. I'm not sure if it's just moisture. I don't think it was water, it's probably just some kind of moisture. Some creasing up there. But again, a solid book. <clears throat> And there's a bunch of uh, comics that you really can't complain about getting for free. Uh, anybody wants to see the rest of my collection, I collected real heavily from 68 to 75. Here's some of my back issues back there. Oh, Spider-Man's. Um, got probably about 5,000 books in my collection. I mainly collect high-grade stuff now. If anybody wants to see them, give me a shout. I'll be glad to rifle through whatever you want to see. I'm strictly a Marvel man. I uh, don't care much for the DCs. They're pretty cool, some of them, but um, strictly Marvel collector here. So if you want to see more, give me a shout.